Hello everyone, Jonathan here, and I have an Axis and Allies 1914 video ready for you. Now, this video, uh, I've been having a little bit of trouble uh, getting inspiration as regularly for video topics as I used to, but this past summer in June, I was at the Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio, uh, like usual. I'm not there every year, but uh, the, I've been there pretty consistently uh, for the last, I don't know, four or five, six years or so. And unlike last year, where I just got involved in a single 1942 second edition tournament, this year I decided to uh, get involved with the 1914 tournament. So that was what I was singularly focused on, as far as Axis and Allies went, of course, there were a lot of other things going on, uh, the events that I attended, games that I demoed, things like that. But as far as Axis and Allies, the 1914 tournament game uh, was uh, the thing that I focused on. And this video, this isn't a rehash of anything that happened or sealing anybody's strategy or anything like that, but I do want to give credit where credit's due my opponents, we were on a, a two versus two game, or I was in a two versus two game. My opponents tried a strategy I hadn't really seen before, and while ultimately it did not work uh, in that game, they did not end up being victorious, it did kind of get me thinking about some alternate strategies that I might employ, or that uh, you out there might consider employing. And so I thought about it a little bit, and so I would say this is as much of an adaptation of uh, my opponent's strategy as it is an adaptation of a video that I posted a while back about taking out France and Italy by, I think it was turn four or so, knocking them into economic and then political collapse before the full might of the United States gets, uh, gets in the war, before England has landed a bunch of troops into France. So it's kind of a merging of those two ideas, and we're going to go through just some concepts. I'm going to do a little bit of troop movement uh, as well. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start. So this strategy is, folk, unlike the other one that I just mentioned that I had posted, uh, it does not involve going after Italy and France with the belief that by the time the U.S. is in the war for a few turns, you're, you're too late, there's nothing you can do to take Paris. This strategy doesn't take that as a given. Instead, it's going to be focused on getting the Central Powers in as strong of a position as possible so that uh, four or five, six turns in, they actually could legitimately uh, fight a successful war against England, France, and the United States over French territory. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to focus on taking out Italy, as you might expect, but instead of France being the other opponent, we're going to focus on Russia. So if all goes the way that we want, I mean, in an ideal world, we'll have no Eastern Front over here, the Ottomans will still be alive, and really, France will be the only Entente nation uh, on the continent of Europe. Now, the odds that the Ottomans will be left alone, uh, just in general, are pretty slim. So, if using this strategy, you'll want to you want to factor in that by the time you're about complete with your Russia and Italy conquest, the Ottomans are probably going to fall, and so the odds are still they're not going to be as one-sided as we would like, uh, certainly as one-sided if the Ottomans were still alive and Russia and Italy were out of the war. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, as Austria, of course, we have to take out Serbia. That's the one mandated move that you have to do. So Serbia is going to have four units. Their production value is two, so they're going to have four units there that you have to take out. And we want to make sure that our army, whatever we move into Serbia, has a free hand on our second turn. Most likely we'll want to move it into Romania. So we want to move in enough to wipe out those four units uh, in a single round of combat. 
So we want to do a little bit of high level math. So we know that artillery's, artillery attack at three. So two artillery, a, th a three out of six, 50% chance. So statistically, two artillery should be able to take out one uh, enemy unit. Now we're gonna pair those artillery with infantry. So two artillery plus two infantry equals four units with a 50% chance of hitting. So we should hit two. We now need to send enough additional infantry to make sure that we take out the other two. Infantry hit on a two out of six, so that's a one third chance. So for every three infantry, we should take out an enemy unit. So we want to send at least six more. Two with artillery, and then six more infantry will give us eight. Statistically, if we roll exactly as we should, we should take them all out. However, uh, one thing that I do in games, and uh, certainly when I'm developing strategy, is to assume that I will always roll average or slightly worse than average, and my opponents will always roll average or slightly better. So I'm gonna need to send more than eight. I would send at least nine, uh, no more than 11, because 11 will give you enough that you should be able to take out a, a full additional unit. And I don't know that we need to send that much extra. We do need to optimize our movement. We're, whatever we don't send here, we're going to send somewhere else and it's going to be useful. So we don't want to overkill it by too much. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to say that we want to be a little bit cautious and we're going to send not 9, but 10 infantry. And I've got that counted out here already. So these guys effectively on turn 1 are just out there. They're not going to be available to do anything else. Now, on the Italian front, we are going to go ahead and attack Tuscany. It isn't important that we take it, we just want to contest it. We don't want Italy to be able to shuffle a guy, those guys in Rome, especially, up to the north uh, on their first turn. So we're going to send these two infantry, as I do this one-handed and try not to make a mess of the board. There we go. Ah. There. So we're going to do that. Uh, then, I'm sure this comes as no surprise, everything else that can get into Venice, we're going to attack Venice. Of course, we're going to make that move today. Now, we also have a situation, which you may have run into before, maybe not, where if France lands in Albania, and we have nobody in Trieste, because remember all these guys are in Venice, Italy, on its turn, can use those mobilized troops and just march up there. So we're going to move. Uh, they'll get four units here. And statistically, it'll be an infantry, or three infantry and an artillery. The infantry and the artillery should hit one. The two infantry, 66% uh, chance of hitting a second one. So we'll want to move at least two, maybe three. Um, I think normally I would move three guys there. But since I don't have them counted out, I'm just going to actually, yeah, I can do that. I'll just move the three there. And then the rest of our army is all going to come up here. And those artillery, and those artillery, and these infantry. Because we want to put that pressure on Russia. We want to be able to either hit Poland or hit Ukraine um, uh, here coming up. Germany will, well, I mean, it depends on what Russia does. If Poland is weak, Germany could attack on its first turn and try and take out Poland. If Russia consolidates in uh, Poland, then Germany isn't going to be able to do that. Germany will reposition and uh, probably attack on its second turn, and then that would be Austria's third turn. But we'll get to that here in a little bit. So then... Uh, Austria is going to put its new units down in Venice, and this is what things are going to look like. So, if all goes well, Serbia will uh, will have Serbia, and our army will be able to move next turn, because that territory will not be contested. We have protected our flank in Trieste. We've taken, uh, hopefully we've taken Tuscany, but if not, we've at least contested it. And statistically, in Venice, Italy should end with 
one unit based on the artillery and all the infantry that Austria has there. Italy should have one guy. So we'll assume, because we're going to assume we were slightly worse than uh, statistical, we're going to assume they have two units there. Now, Russia is going to do its thing, and it's probably going to consolidate either in Poland or Ukraine. If in Poland, then Germany can't really attack, it can't get to Ukraine, and it can't hit Poland in that case. If it has split its forces between Ukraine and Poland, then that could represent an interesting opportunity. Depending on how it looks, Germany might attack Poland, and then Austria might attack Ukraine, depending on the distribution of forces, if they both look like they could be reasonably successful. If the Russians have consolidated in Ukraine, then Germany can go ahead and move just uh, some forward into Poland and still consolidate into Galatia there. So there are a few different options over here, and uh, Germany needs to be adaptable to what it sees Russia doing. Austria doesn't in this case because Austria goes before Russia. And then uh, Austria and Germany will need to work closely together as they kind of one-two punch and maneuver their way into Russia, trying to knock it out of the war as quickly as possible. But what are we going to do otherwise? So we want to make it so that Venice is not contested, because we want the Austrian units to have a free hand their next turn. So depending on how many Italian units are in Venice, that will determine how many units Germany needs to send down from Munich. And we want to send down just enough to wipe out the whatever Italians are left, uh, plus a little bit of a buffer in case we roll bad, um, and maybe another unit or two. So let's say that they have uh, two units there. If we send our, or the Italians have two units there, if we send two artillery and two infantry, that should take them out. And so if we send another two to three uh, infantry down there, that should be enough to wipe out whatever forces the Italians have. But that is something that you will have to uh, play by ear, depending on what Italy's forces look like down there. Now, if the Austrians have completely wiped them out, uh, you still want to send at least a little bit, because you want to be able to strike out, if necessary, into Tuscany or into Piedmont on your next turn. So you will want to send uh, at least a handful of units, probably at least four or so. Um, I would say probably between four and six units you would want to send down there just depending on what Italy has. And uh, I would lean more towards probably around five or so. So, uh, yeah, let me correct that. So I'm going to say five or six units down there. That should be enough to deal with Italy. Um, and if Italy lost more units, if they only have one or if they have none, then that should give you enough to do what you need to do in Tuscany and Piedmont. Everything else from Munich, as well as from Alsace here, is going to come down into Switzerland. So let's go ahead. I don't want this to get too crowded, so I'm just going to move all these guys. They're basically out of the way. They're either in Piedmont, uh, I'm sorry, not Piedmont, they're either in Venice or they're in Switzerland. So this is what we have left. Well, of course, Kiel is going to go into Belgium over there. Now, we are going to, we need to protect our flank here, uh, down in Alsace. The French can't get to Ruhr, so we're good there, but we've got nothing in Alsace. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to move them, and we're also going to move these guys from Kiel. Uh, if I said these guys were from Kiel before, sorry about that, they're from Ruhr. Those guys I just moved down to Alsace are in Kiel. So we have some units over on the French front. We don't, we're not going after the French. We certainly have the option to do so if we have forces in Belgium and Alsace and Switzerland. So the French can't breathe a sigh of relief and think, oh, thank goodness, we're okay, we can go on the offensive. They still need to be intelligent in their movements. And we can also, let's say they attack Belgium, and we, if we wanted to, we can 
easily move guys from Alsace up there. We can uh, shovel guys from Switzerland up there. We don't really want to do that, but it is an option if for some reason something goes really awry. If the French attack in Switzerland, then we can move these guys down that way. If they attack in Alsace, we can come from both directions. So we're not planning on attacking into France. We have the option, but we also have a fairly strong defensive position. We also, because we aren't contesting any, uh, we're not in any contested battles with the French, they are only able to attack with the units that they have up on the border. They can't get, like if we were to attack Lorraine, for example, it's contested. Now, these guys from Paris can double move over there. These, this guy from Brest can double move over there. This guy from Bordeaux can double move. Uh, basically, if we attack uh, either of these places, well, I'm sorry, we can't get to there. If we were to attack Lorraine, the entire French army um, on its turn can counterattack. That's not what we want. And the reason also that we only want to send, uh, we want to send enough but no more, really, to Venice, is because the French might get a crazy idea, maybe not so crazy, um, to try and attack Switzerland here to contest this and prevent us from using that army in the next turn. Um, and they actually have two territories that border, so they've got 12 infantry and four artillery, so that's a fair number of units. So we want to make that as costly for them as possible. Now, if they were to do something like that, then we're going to modify Austria's next turn. Austria, instead of using its guys from uh, Vienna to fight the Russians or reinforce somewhere, uh, would use those to sweep into Switzerland and try and knock out any remaining French units. But it's important that the French take as many casualties as possible uh, when they attack, if they attack, so that the Austrians will have an easier time and hopefully the French don't have enough units that they can survive attacking and those casualties against the large German army as well as an attack from Austria. So uh, that's a lot, so let's move on a little bit. Um, and I'm not going to mention Germany has some naval movements, of course, we're not going to worry about those. We're just talking about the land right now. So this is how things look, or I'm sorry, we still need to do this. So we talked a little bit about what uh, Germany might do depending on what Russia does. So, but essentially, all of these units are going to be preoccupied on this front somewhere along here. So we're going to leave, if we don't attack Poland, then we're going to leave just uh, a to kind of a token force up here, and we're going to send the rest down this way. So we'll just, that's, that's a giant mess now. Sorry about that. So we're going to end up with a ton of units down here. Uh, to take on or to counter maneuver with whatever Russia has. And we should be fairly comparable in terms of the total number of units to what Russia has all over its nation. So when it consolidates and we consolidate, defensively we should be pretty similar. Now, the central powers are split uh, between two armies, so they can't all move as one. So that's going to make them a little bit weaker offensively, but because they are the ones attacking, they also get to choose. Uh, Russia has to worry about, well, where are they going to attack? And if I don't defend Ukraine, they're going to go into Poland. If I don't go into Poland, they're going to go in Ukraine. If I uh, split my forces evenly, then they're easily going to crush them piecemeal. What do I do? How do, how do I defend? Well, Russia has to deal with that. The Central Powers, Austria and Germany here, get to pick and choose. So that gives them a little bit of an advantage on that front. Now, assuming that we that France doesn't do something to try and screw us up over here in Switzerland, Austria, all of its units every turn, including the first turn, are going to be thrown at uh, Russia. Now, we could modify that a little bit, depending on what goes on in Italy. Um, actually, yeah, I should uh, I should amend my previous statement. There will probably be a small number of forces that go into Italy, but the majority of our forces will be focused on Russia. Now, when it comes to the Ottomans, 
this is a part of the strategy that I could see going either way. One of the issues with the Ottomans with tournament rules is that they typically are knocked out of the war or, the, or an economic collapse turn two, turn three, political collapse turn three, turn four. And so they just are focused on staying alive. And there could be benefits to that, certainly, if they manage to succeed, but it's extremely difficult. Um, even, even I have had great difficulty with that. So an alternative could be, well, let's assume that they're going to get knocked out, let's say turn four. How much damage if they used only what was necessary to survive until turn four, how much extra damage could they do if they were also invading Russia at the same time as Austria and Germany. So they could go into Bulgaria. If Romania is contested when Austria moves up here in its turn, they could try and clear Romania. Maybe they can get to Sevastopol uh, or reinforce Ukraine. So that's turn one, turn two, turn three. If they can survive till turn four, they can maybe take out some straggler Russian units. Because we know when they go into political collapse, let's say end of turn four, that all of their units will disappear. So taking territory at that point isn't really going to help, but uh, they could uh, kill some Russian units, and up till that point, they could try and take territory away, forcing Russia into economic or political collapse eventually. We're not going to count on that, but uh, we might be able to get a few extra Ottoman forces up here if we just throw in the towel and assume, yeah, there's nothing we can do just try and hang on till turn four. Uh, just use whatever you need to uh, to do that and send everything else up north. Now, when it comes to Italy, so on turn one, we've contested Tuscany, we've contested, uh, or we've taken, hopefully, uh, we better have taken Venice. Now, Italy on its turn, of course, is going to move up here. They're going to take Tuscany back. Because the Germans are in Switzerland, they are in a conundrum because they can't move out of Piedmont uh, to reinforce or to try and attack back Venice without leaving Piedmont uh, in jeopardy. And so regardless of what they do, if they try and counterattack in, uh, in Venice, or if they leave their guys in Piedmont, or if they abandon Piedmont altogether, or if France moves a couple of guys in there, we still want to end uh, Germany's turn essentially, uh, with Piedmont, Venice, and Tuscany. So on Italy's turn, it's going to uh, contest Tuscany once again. It's got its, it might have its navy here. It can shovel guys over, possibly, just depending on what things look like. But it certainly has this army here. It can move in to Tuscany. It can also move into Piedmont. Uh, German forces are also able to move similarly. They can attack both of these positions from Venice. It can they can also attack both of those or they can attack uh, Venice and uh, Piedmont from Switzerland. So the end of Italy's second turn, well, on the start of Italy's second turn, these three territories need to be uh, contested or hopefully controlled by the central power. So that's economic collapse and. As far as the central powers go over here, uh, Germany's second turn, uh, really at the latest probably, is when they're going to make their move, then Austria's third turn, uh, then Germany's fourth turn, uh, they're just going to work together and move in here. So by the, uh, let's say the fourth turn, Russia ought to be in some sort of economic collapse. Now it might just be Italy and Russia, or maybe Italy, Russia, and the Ottomans are all in that position. But the idea is we send just what we need to deal with Italy and defend France, send a lot of our forces over to deal with Russia so that we knock both of them out of the war using some of those uh, moves that I just showed you or close approximations of them to try and make that happen. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I know it's been a while. I just, uh, like I said, inspiration hasn't been striking me as frequently, and I want to make sure that I have some sort of uh, uh, halfway, at least, thought out, hopefully more than that thought out idea uh, when I post these different strategy videos. So, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, whenever I come up with another strategy topic or another Axis Analyze related topic that I think you'll be interested in, I will definitely get that posted. Have a good day, everybody.